In this session, we'll be discussing about light processes in bacteria. So there will be like three light processes coming up, maybe nutrition in bacteria, respiration in bacteria, and finally reproduction in bacteria. So we'll be starting up with nutrition in bacteria. I've already been telling you that bacteria are the most nutritionally diverse kingdom. You have every sort of nutritionally diversity here. Now when you look around, bacteria can be autotrophic. Autotrophs are the uh, organisms, those can prepare, trophic means nutrition, auto means self. So they can draw their nourishment itself, maybe by photosynthetic way or chemosynthetic way. If you can look around, photosynthetic is in presence of light and chemosynthetic is in presence of some chemical energy. Bacteria can also be heterotrophic, hetero means from others. They will be depending upon for their nourishment on some other sources. Now these sources can be different and because of that the bacteria can be parasitic. It is depending upon living organisms. It can be saprophytic. The bacteria is depending upon some dead organisms. Apart from that there is one more sort of uh, nourishment which bacteria drives is called symbiotic nourishment. Bacteria remains associated with maybe with plants or some other organisms and they mutually benefit that particular organism and take the nourishment from that particular organism which is called sim. Sim means together, biotic, it's life. Two lives are living together and benefiting each other. So that way it is called symbiotic nourishment. So you can see all modes of nourishment are present in bacteria. It can be photoautotrophic, it can be chemoautotrophic, it can be parasitic, saprophytic or symbiotic. If you can move further in the details, what happens in photoautotrophic bacteria? So photoautotrophic bacteria will be harnessing sunlight and after harnessing sunlight, the bacteria will have to convert that light into chemical energy so that this chemical energy can be used for the bacterial glucose formation or the, for the food formation. Now, you must be knowing about plant photosynthesis where CO2 reacts with water and gives you glucose. When CO2 reacts with water and giving you the glucose, the oxygen comes out as the byproduct. You already, you must be knowing about the photosynthetic reaction. But what happens in bacteria? In bacteria, water is not the source of electron. The CO2 does not react with water. The CO2 reacts with any other molecule, but it is not water. It can be H2S or some other sulfur compounds or maybe some other organic compounds. So CO2 reacts with all these compounds and form the glucose. When all these compounds are not water, away from the water, the oxygen is not the product, I mean the byproduct which will be coming out. So the bacterial photosynthesis is an oxygenic. Always remember, if you talk about higher plants and bacteria, in higher plants also photosynthesis is taking place. In some bacteria where photosynthesis is taking place, Water is not the source of electron in bacteria. Water is the source of electron in case of higher plants. So when in higher plants, when we talk about, in higher plants, oxygen comes out, so that photosynthesis becomes oxygenic. But in bacteria, oxygen is not coming out, so bacterial photosynthesis is always, remember, it is anoxygenic. In higher plants, most of the pigments are chlorophyll molecules. But in bacteria, there is something slightly different from chlorophyll that also harness light, which is called bacteriochlorophyll. And bacterial chlorophyll, apart from that, you also have bacteroviridin. Now what happens, the bacteria can be photolithotropic or photoorganotropic. I've told you that in bacteria, CO2 does not react with water. Then what does it react with? And I've told you it can react with some sulfur compounds or it can react with some non-sulfur organic compounds. So if the bacteria is reacting with sulfur compounds, it is called photolithotropic. If the bacteria is not reacting with sulfur compounds and reacting with any other organic compounds, it can be photoorganotropic. Now photolithotropic can be green sulfur bacteria or purple sulfur bacteria. Similarly, photoorganotropic, because there is no sulfur, the bacteria will be known as green non-sulfur bacteria or purple non-sulfur bacteria. So this is all about photosynthesis in bacteria. When you talk about chemoautotrophic mode of nutrition in bacteria, the bacteria does not harness sunlight. But then too it makes food. The question comes how? It makes the food by chemical energy obtained through different cycles. Maybe from nitrogen cycle, hydrogen cycle, sulfur cycle. There are different cycles where bacteria comes as a what you call source of uh, I mean utilization and bacteria drives the energy from those particular cycles. 
what happens in nitrogen cycle you must be knowing about NH3 gets converted to NO2 minus NO2 minus gets converted to NO3 minus because NO3 minus is the form where plant take it now what happens during this conversion when NH3 is getting converted to NO2 minus and NO2 minus is getting converted to NO3 minus you require some set of bacteria now these bacteria are helping in that particular conversion but every step it's releasing some chemical energy and those chemical energy are utilized by bacteria and thus these bacteria play important role in recycling of nutrients it can be asked which among the following bacteria will help you in recycling of nutrients so these bacteria are actually taking the chemical energy from the nutrients so they help in recycling of nutrients your answer would be chemoautotrophic bacteria so they two modes were when you talk about these two modes were autotrophic modes auto means they were preparing the food by themselves when you talk about these three modes these three modes are heterotrophic heterotrophic as in like they cannot prepare the food now the bacteria can be saprophyte saprophyte means the bacteria is driving nourishment from the dead decaying remains what happens during this the bacteria when it grows on some dead decaying material maybe dead animals or plants or litter fall or anything the bacteria will secrete some enzymes it will secrete some digestive enzyme which will convert that hydrocarbon may be like complex hydrocarbon to the simpler carbon and when it is happening the bacteria is driving nourishment out of it so it is there some sometimes they are useful in the in the way because they are actually helping the decomposition apart from that these bacteria saprophytic bacteria are also used in wastewater treatment they clean the earth surface they are also used in wastewater treatment when you talk about parasitic bacteria Parasitic bacteria always grow on living organisms and these living organisms are called host. So whichever living organism they are growing, they also take the nourishment. Apart from taking the nourishment, they give the disease to that particular what you call organism and mostly they are pathogenic. They grow on living material, living, living matter can be animals, can be plants, can be humans, can be some other microorganisms. And once they are taking the nourishment out of that particular host, they become parasitic, they have become pathogenic that they give disease to that particular organism. Symbiotic, I've already told, it is made up of two words. Sim is together, biotic is life. So two lives are living together. Basically, the symbiotic bacteria are gram-negative. We have already discussed about gram staining and I've told you what is gram-negative bacteria. Now, there are two important bacteria I'm listed, Rhizobium and Frankia. Both of the bacteria can fix nitrogen when they are associated with plants. So in the plant, they will fix nitrogen and from the plant, they will get nourishment. So they are in symbiotic association. Always remember, rhizobium makes a symbiotic relationship with legumes. Now you must be knowing about legumes plant. The legume plants are mostly pulses or the members of leguminosae. Those have root nodules and in these root nodules, the bacteria, this rhizobium goes and, you know, makes a symbiotic relationship and fixes nitrogen. When you talk about Frankia, it does not what you call it does not get associated with legumes it gets associated with non-legumes always remember this particular important question that uh, what you call frankia reacts with uh, frankia goes and uh, combines with non-legumes plant it goes and combines with legumes plant the non-legume plant can be like casuarina so always remember some of the other time they kept asking you which among the following is a symbiotic bacteria which gets associated with non-legumes and they will also give you legumes in one of the options. But don't take legumes because Frankia does not make uh, association with legumes. It always makes like association with non-legumes. Since all the modes of nourishment are present in bacteria, it becomes what you call uh, what you call one of the most diverse kingdom. So always remember these points when you are like going through the nutrition of bacteria. In next session, we'll be talking about respiration in bacteria.